Hello, this is JR, the conservative social justice warrior, and I am back with another installment in my pursuit to tell the truth and spread as much information about the Democratic Party as possible. Uh, today's episode is going to cover absentee fathers. <clears throat> So we've heard Candace Owens and Larry Elders and Officer Tatum and, and many others uh, speak on absentee fathers and the um, and how detrimental that's been to the uh, black community not having fathers in the household. And of course, if you watch my walk away video, I sort of talked about briefly um, how the white liberals, such as Progressive Democrat, and a few of their black uh, sycophant minions. Uh, destroyed the black family, pushed the father out of the household. I mean, at a time coming into the 60s, 75, 80, as, as high as 85 percent, I've heard some numbers, say that uh, most, everyone agreed that most black kids were in a home being raised by a mother and a father. Well, of course, we know that wasn't allowed to, to continue. That had to be stopped. Um, it had to be stopped because the Democratic Party is just hell-bent on destroying families, destroying people. They need that destruction. That's the only way they can feel good about who they are. It's the only way they can maintain white privilege and white superiority is to destroy all those around them. And this is what they're hell-bent on. So let's talk about the uh, absentee fathers. Of course, a lot of y'all know that, uh, I've told you, and I try to read a book a week, and that's becoming more difficult to keep that schedule, uh, only because of the increased information that I have to now digest, read, and keep up with. So for the last two weeks, I have been focusing on studies from large liberal universities. Make sure I say liberal, because I don't want anyone to accuse me of only pulling data and studies from somehow right-wing universities, which I don't think there are very many of. Um, so these are studies performed by large liberal universities. And I'm going to tell you that I knew this was a problem. I didn't realize how much of a problem and how deep the problem was until I started reading these studies. And it's convinced me that when Larry Elders and Candace Owens say that this is the number one problem affecting the uh, black community, that they don't do justice to the statement because not only is this the number one issue, number two would be hundreds of miles away. It's just how much distance there is between two and a hundred. Um, that if you solve one, issue two through a hundred, which may only be one or two percent of the problem, will take care of itself. It pales in comparison. All the rest of them compel, pales in comparison to this one issue. And let me explain to you why. So reading through the studies, here's what I found. <clears throat> there is not one social ill today that doesn't somehow trace back to absentee fathers. Obesity in kids, absentee fathers. Drug use, alcohol use, absentee fathers. Gang involvement, absentee fathers. Prostitution with kids, male, male and female, absentee fathers. Kids being abused, maltreated, absentee fathers. Women raising children by themselves, suffering from depression and, 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 and other mental illness. Because they're raising children by themselves, the stress of it takes its toll. Even the, even the unborn. I've seen study after study that, that shows how the unborn child, that a woman with a supportive man in her life who's supports a pregnancy, who's there with her, still lose their children at a rate of about 22% of pregnancies that don't go to term and deliver a live birth. But for women who are doing it by themselves, the rate is 44%, twice. Actually, one study even suggests that just having your father involved in your life, if you're a lady, even if the guy is not there, if your baby daddy is not there, 
Just having your father involved helps. That's lower than the 44% that you get with women that have no one who are going at it alone. High school dropout rates, absentee fathers. Kids who grew up in households of single parents are two or three times likely to repeat it. And then, so, and then one study even suggested that it's not just even absentee fathers, it's absentee grandfathers. See, they said, you know, that the father's a disciplinarian of the family, but the grandfather provides the wisdom. And, and so when you are born into a family structure this way, raised in this family structure, not having a father around is a down payment on destruction for you, your children, and your grandchildren. So you can't say that it's all about the children. Oh, no, I care about my kids, I love my kids. You, you cannot make that statement and then go into an election booth and vote for a party that is hell-bent on destroying your family. And for you silly people out there who think that, well, this doesn't affect me because, you know, we have a two-parent household. We're raising our children. Okay, but what about your children's friends? What about those who exert peer pressure on your kids? What about the kids of your family members, neighbors, other community members who are going at it alone in single-parent households? How many stories have, how many times have we heard stories of what well, Johnny was raised with a mother and a father and Johnny was, was such a good kid until he got wrapped up, got caught up in the, in the wrong circles. With who? The bad kids. So you can't take a selfish approach and just think, oh, well, you know, I'm, me and my husband are together and we're raising our children the correct way. And then go vote for Democrats who are hell-bent on destroying the lives of children because that's an investment for the future. There are 20 million children right now being raised in homes by a single parent. 20 million, that's one in four. So I ask you, just how many children do we have to sacrifice at the altar of the Democratic Party? How many lives have to be destroyed? Is 20 million enough? You see, if you date back to the war on poverty where this started, how many millions of lives have been wrecked Needlessly, it didn't have to be. Because Democrats want to be superior, want to rule, and want to be in charge. And they don't care how many lives they have to destroy in order to get that. So I ask you, how many? Is 20 million enough? How about 40 million? 60? See, the 20 million today will be 40 or 50 million in the next generation because a lot of those kids are going to go repeat the same thing. Go, 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 go suffer through, have children, and go through the same thing, same cycle, as their parents went through. So if you want to put a stop to this, once and for all, you must never, ever vote for a Democrat ever again. Never, until we bring them to their knees. See, I have my shirt on today, you can see. Voting red till I'm dead. Join me in this effort. I've gotten a, a number of responses and uh, comments from people who have asked to join my movement, and I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Help spread the word, help send as many people to the video as possible. So there's a saying in the, uh, in the black community, if you listen to rap music or you grew up in the black community, you may have heard it. It's, um, the saying goes, uh, um, the plan of the man, word to the mother. And if you don't know what that means, it's basically a warning to, to mothers to protect your children. Look out for your children. The saying basically is saying that the master plan of the power structure is to incarcerate your kids, get them hooked on drugs, throw them in jail. That basically there's nothing positive. The, the plan is, is not a positive thing that the plan of the man, in this case the man is the Democratic Party, and their, and their black side piece who do their bidding. That's, that, that is the plan, to wreak as much destruction on this country as possible so they can transform it into their utopia, 
Utopia for them is where they're in charge. Utopia for them is where they make the decisions, where the rest of us are all dependent on government and the elite of government. They make sure that, that their kids, the elite, the, kids, the children of the elite, go to good schools. The rest of us, yeah, send your kids to the failing public schools that we know are terrible. We have a proven, we have a track record. We don't have to that's not even up for debate. Plan of the man, word to the mother. If you care about your kids, you care about other kids, you care about the kids that your kids hang out with, stop voting for a party that is destroying family structure. They laugh at Republicans for speaking about family values. Now, I ask you, who's more noble in this pursuit? The party that supports strong families, that encourage people to raise their children correctly, to be law-abiding citizens, not go out and ride and loot in the name of some you know, fake social movement, or the party that is, has a track record for destroying families and proud of it. And people say, well, you know, well, Jim, how do you know this? Well, they support Black Lives Matter. They provide cover for it, they provide money for it. Why? Because Black Lives Matter is their military wing, Antifa is their military wing. The KKK was their military wing. And go read, go to the Black Lives Matter website and see what it says about family. They say they don't support the Western family structure. What in the hell is the Western family structure? Oh, well, you know, JR, that's where you have a mother and a father in the household. That's quite racist. Wait a minute, it's racist to have a mother and a father in a household? And you think that's, a, that's just a Western thing? As if people in the East don't have a, children in the East don't have a mother and a father in a household? Last time I checked, the emperor penguin down in Antarctica has a mother and a father who raise their offspring. I guess that's racist too. The, even the penguins down in, in, in Antarctica are, are racist. Every species that, where there's a, a male and a female raising offspring is racist in nature. This is, this is how idiotic these people are. And the Democratic Party provides cover for Black Lives Matter. Why? Because initially, everyone thought it was about police brutality. You remember Kaepernick taking a knee? You know, everybody, you know, hands in the air, don't shoot. Michael Brown, which is a lie. But no, it really wasn't about Black Lives Matter. It wasn't about police brutality. It was never about that. The Democratic Party jumped on the bandwagon, really, here lately, once they realized that Black Lives Matter is advocating the destruction of the Western family. And they define Western family as a mother and a father. Oh, well, you know, if y'all had just told us that from the beginning, oh, come on board. We can provide you money. We'll provide you coverage in the press to make sure that when you go out there and loot, burn, and tear down things, we'll call it a peaceful protest. We'll make excuses for you. Don't, don't, don't worry, we, we, we got your back. Just, just keep advocating for the destruction of that Western family that you talk about. Yeah, we're all for that. Who, who, who wants to have a Western family? This is what that party is about. This is what that group is about. This is why they provide coverage for Black Lives Matter. This is why they provide money to them not because of police brutality. Ask people who are awake, who are woke, they'll tell you police brutality is not really, if you look at the numbers, an issue. You have more deaths in, you know, on a weekend in Chicago than all of the police shootings of black men, unarmed black men in America in a year. So black uh, police shooting unarmed black men is not the issue that black people should be, should be concerned about. It happens so infrequently that it didn't show up statistically on the radar. But if you allow them to continue to destroy the black family, I keep telling you, white people, they are bringing that same destruction to a suburb near you. It won't be long before your neighborhoods are torn up and destroyed. Your schools are poor. Because, like they said, it doesn't, it, it's racist to have good schools in the suburbs and poor schools in the inner city. But then you have to ask yourself, who runs the inner cities? 
Hmm? How many Republican school boards are there in the inner city, in America? You look at the places that have good governance, they seem to be in states and counties and districts controlled by Republicans. Democrats seem to be suffering and hemorrhaging money all over the place, mismanaging funds, can't quite get it together, can't pick up trash, manage the infrastructure of the streets, provide security for their people. And now because they're so hell-bent on getting rid of Trump, you have mayors and governors who won't even do their job, won't even protect people and property. Just, just let the peaceful protesters have their way with destroying your business, destroying your home, maiming people, assaulting people. How many officers have been injured or killed doing all this peaceful protest process? I can't begin to tell you how angry it is how angry you become. My life would have been much easier and simpler if I'd just never been curious, never wanted to know this stuff. Just walk through life with blinders on, just dumb, ignorant, and walking in bliss from not knowing. Knowledge has a way of making you see things. And for those of you who subscribe to my channel, Conservative Social Justice Warrior, send your comments in and suggestions and pass information on I learned quite a bit from you guys also. So it's not just me passing knowledge to you. I learned so much from hearing the stories. I spend as much time as I have to to, com to respond to every comment sent to me. And, and lately I've gotten thousands. But that's my pledge that if you reach out to me, I promise you I will, reach, I will return in kind. But I'm even more angry now than I was just two weeks ago. And so I'm, I'm begging people, please watch the video, do your homework, learn about that party and what they're doing to America before you go vote for them ever again. We have to bring them to their knees. They have to apologize for what they've done. They have to atone, make some positive effort to make up for what they've done. I'm not sure how you repair the damage that they've done historically. It can't be done. There, there's no amount of money that they can provide, no amount of community service they can do. So really, all they can do right now, all they can do right now is apologize and hope that the rest of us forgive them, which I know the heart of America, if you ask for forgiveness, we are a very kind and forgiving nation. People will forgive that party. And at that point, we can start over, start working together. The unity that everyone wants can happen at that point. It cannot happen the way things are structured today. Also, before I close, I want to give a big, big shout out to Louis uh, Gohmert, um, Republican from, um, from East Texas, representative, who has a bill in Congress right now. And I know Pelosi is not going to let it come up to a, a vote. Her caucus will not allow that to happen. But he basically has a bill that he's uh, introduced to outlaw the Democratic Party. And I think we should join him and give him as much support as possible. With that being said, guys, I'm going to uh, bring this video to an end. I want to say thank you once again. And uh, please subscribe, like, and share. We have to share, spread the word that there's a new movement in starting. So join Blexit. Join the walkaway crowd, support uh, Turning Point USA with uh, Charlie and Candace. Uh, support the, uh, Cand I mean, uh, 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 Diamond and Silk. Support all those people that are trying to bring awareness to what's going on. And of course, if you want to help me bring that party to its knees, please join me, your conservative social justice warrior. Thank you.